So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over the concept of reciprocals both meaning what they are and how to calculate them. So reciprocals act as a multiplying inverse to multiplying. So I know that doesn't quite make much sense so let me put that in another way. So for example imagine if your division button didn't work on your calculator and you wanted to divide. Now obviously I know with modern day calculators you could use a fraction button but let's just say you've got a really basic calculator with the basic maths operations on there and your division button didn't work. So how could we do that? So we could do that by using reciprocals. So to, before we go into that let's have a look if imagine if your addition or subtraction button stop working then all you need to do is to reverse the process is just reverse the sign of the second digit to perform the reverse calculation so for example if I wanted to work out 3 plus 9 but imagine the plus button doesn't work so what I would do then is I'll do 3 I would change the sign of the 9 in which I would have minus because minus still works and I change the number of the 9 to turn it into minus 9 and both of those two calculations would give me the answer of 12. Now if I was doing subtraction, so again imagine that the subtraction button wasn't working, so what I could do is I could do 10 plus and then I would do minus 7. And both of those two answers if I worked it out would give me 3. Now before you say well I thought you just said your minus button doesn't work, this is your negative button not your subtraction button. So let's have a look at what an actual reciprocal is. Now a way of doing this for multiplying is to use the reciprocal of a number. Now simply put, the reciprocal of a number is basically 1 divided by that number. So here if I just write the reciprocal of a number is equal to 1 over whatever that number is. And that's basically generally the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 5 is going to be 1 over 5. The reciprocal of minus 2 is going to be 1 over minus 2 or minus a half. The reciprocal of 27 is just simply going to be 1 over 27. And the reciprocal of minus 100 is simply just going to be minus 1 over 100. Now when it comes to reciprocal of fractions, which tends to come into play more the higher level stuff, is when you've got the reciprocal of a fraction, let me just use difficult a pen, so the reciprocal of a fraction, all you need to do here is flim simply flip the fraction. And by what I mean by that is simply just flip the two numbers away from each other. And the reason why that works is because if I do 1 divided by, let's say I wanted 2 thirds, then what I would do here is I would change the division and using the rules of fractions, so if I wrote that as 1 over 1 divided by 2 thirds, then if you think to yourself the rules of dividing fractions is you flip second fraction, that becomes 1 over 1, that becomes 3 over 2 and that division symbol becomes a times and so that then becomes 3 over 2. So notice how I wanted the reciprocal of minus 1, uh, 1 over 2 over 3 then becomes 3 over 2. So rather than going through all this leeway I can just remember that when I'm doing the reciprocal of a fraction I just swap the numerator and the denominator around. So this is going to be 3 over 2 and this is going to be minus 6 over 5. Now going back to the original statement of reversing multiplying but still multiplying that if I wanted to work out 10 divided by let's say 2 and let's say the division button didn't work so what I'm going to do instead is multiply this now rather than writing 2 I'm going to use the reciprocal of 2 so it's going to be a half and that would give me 5 and this would also give me 5 and that's the whole point of reciprocals. So let's have a look at some example questions and again you tend to find in a GCSE exam or in a test that these types of questions only are going to be worth one mark, they're never worth more than that and some, in some cases they are often multiple choice questions. So let's have a look at the series of these typical examples you can get. So it says which of the following is a reciprocal of 5? Well the reciprocal of 5 is 1 over 5 and which of those three op four options is it? Well it's C so I can just circle that. With question two, which of the following is reciprocal of a quarter? So remember, what do we do here with a fraction? Is we so it's one over a quarter, but in other words, we just flip the fraction around. So a quarter then becomes four over one, and four over one is just four. So the correct answer then is D. Then with question three, we've got to do these three. So a reciprocal of six 
is going to be 1 over 6. The reciprocal of 13 is going to be 1 over 13. And the reciprocal of a half, again, we flip the fraction and then just simplify it if it can be. So that's 2 over 1, which is just 2. Then with question 4, it says work out a reciprocal of 2 thirds. So again, what we need to do here is flip the fraction. Now, when you get a decimal, what you want to do first, so with decimals, oh, if I can spell with, which I'm not trying to do there. So with decimals, convert into fractions first, particularly if it's on a non-calculator paper. So convert into a fraction and then perform the reciprocal. Or reciprocal, I should say. So here, 0 0.5 is a half. So if I'm then doing 1 over a half, that then becomes 2 over 1. So the answer then is 2. Then moving on to our last question says work out the reciprocal of 7 over 10. So again, all I need to do is flip the fraction so it becomes 10 over 7. So I could leave my answer like that or I could write it as a mixed number so it's going to be 1 and 3 sevenths. But I would say 10 over 7 is probably expected. And then with 3 over 5, well 3.5 is 7 over 2. And if I then flip that fraction, it then becomes 2 over 7, and there is my final answer. Now, if I did write 1 over 3.5, I probably wouldn't get a mark for it because you shouldn't be having decimals in a fraction. So just be mindful of that and just recognize, generally speaking, with these questions, you tend to have nicer decimal numbers, so it should be quite fluent in terms of how you convert that. But again, nothing too complex. You're not going to get, like, to convert 2.17 which again, even if you did, it would be 217 over 100. And then we just flip the fraction. So it becomes 100 over 217. And then you can just then go on and simplify if it can. And that, and then we move on to, oh, actually, we've got one more question here. So it says calculate the reciprocal of minus 0 0.07. So again, what we want to do here is convert this into a fraction. So convert into a fraction. And so that then becomes 7 over, and it's 100, so 7 one hundredths. And um, don't forget the minus. And then all I then need to do is then convert this and flip the fraction so it becomes 100 over 7. And remembering it's a minus. And then from this, we then need to just, if it's on a non calculated paper, we just need to work out what that is to one decimal place. So here I've got 7s into 1, go none carry the 1, 7s into 10 go 1, remainder 3, 7s into 30 go 4, remainder 2, and then 7s into 20 go 2, remainder 6, and then 7s into 60 go 8, and remainder, we don't need to worry about the remainder because I want it to one decimal place, so then just need to round 14.28 to one decimal place, so 14.28 to one decimal place is going to be 14.3 and there is my final answer. If this question is on a calculated paper, I would just simply type in minus 1 over 0 0.07, give you a relative a, a fraction if, it, if you've got a Casio calculator, but typically it would give you an answer that rounded to one decimal place is 14.3. Now, as well as a standalone topic, reciprocals also features in other topics as well, notably in indices like questions you can see on the screen. So if we just go through quickly some of the answers of what this means. Now, negative power basically means you do the reciprocal of the base number, and you can do that first, or you can deal with the actual digit of the power. So with question A, we've got 2 to the power 1. So what that means is we've got the reciprocal of 2, so we do that first, and to the power of 1. So the negative power just means the reciprocal and I would say that if you do that first before dealing with the power then that's going to be fine so the answer then is just going to be a half then for B we've got here we've got to the power of minus 2 so again I'm dealing with the negative power first so I've got 3 so I do the reciprocal of 3 and that's going to be squared and then all I then need to do is square the numerator and the denominator giving me 1 over 9 and that there is my final answer then with C so again, here I've got a fraction, so I've got reciprocal of the fraction, so I flip the fraction, so that becomes 5 over 3, and then I need to deal with the power, which is to the power of 1, which is just itself, so the final answer is 5 thirds. 
And then finally, with question D, we've got four ninths to the power of minus two. So again, I'm going to deal with the power first. So I flip the fraction and then I deal with the two. So then I've got to square both numbers. So I get 81 over 16. And there is my final answer for that one. Then another topic that reciprocal can be found with is equations of a line and dealing with the word of perpendicular. Now a perpendicular, so the gradient of a perpendicular line that is perpendicular to y equals mx plus c, so the normal equation of a line, is minus 1 over m and m being the gradient so we do the reciprocal of the gradient and that will therefore give us the gradient of the line that is perpendicular so looking at this particular question here m is 4 so therefore the gradient of the perpendicular line is going to be minus 1 over 4 so once i've got that they can then use the formula so this is what m equals so m equals minus 1 over 4. Remember that this 4 equals to this line here. So m equals minus 4. I've got the coordinates of 2, 12. So if I then use that as x1 and that as y1, now I'm going to use the formula of y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, as opposed to using y equals mx plus c. I find this equation a lot easier for me to use. So I've got y minus 12 equals minus a quarter x minus 2 and then I just got to expand the brackets so I get a y minus 12 equals minus a quarter minus or plus a half actually and I've missed out the x there and then I just need to add the 12 so I've got y equals minus a quarter x then I've got a half plus 12 which is 12 and a half and there is my final answer giving my sort of values as um, fraction, uh, fractions and mixed numbers. If you wanted to write as a whole number, you could multiply it through. But again, that's kind of talk, discussed more in detail in coordinate geometry and lines of a straight line, equations of a straight line.